Are you suffering from ED? <laughs> I was kidding. You didn't. You, it, no, you just you didn't click the wrong video. I just hoping that maybe you were like sitting in front of other people when you opened the the show and they heard that. I just would like to see the look on your face. I'm. This is not. This is not a video about ED, folks. No, no, no. This is a video about real estate. This is a video about buying properties with only thirteen thousand dollars and then having them professionally managed because you can't get a boner. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise, and today's show is for you because it's always for you, man. It is always for you guys, right? Specifically, though, it's for my dude, Dirty Sanchez. <laughs> Dirty Sanchez. Yeah, that's his name. He asked me to call him Dirty Sanchez. You talk about guys that can't get boners? Well, it ain't Dirty Sanchez. I can guarantee you he's probably working with a full-on flagpole right now. Dirty Sanchez is the kind of guy that pops a Viagra before a business meeting so he can exert his dominance when he enters the realm. You know what I'm saying? But enough about boners, folks. We need to talk about real estate. And I got to tell you, cheap real estate like what I got today gives me a boner. God, I can't stop. Okay, anyway, dirty. I got a deal for you that I think you're going to love, bro. 13 grand. It's only going to require 13 grand. I know you're living in California, so... Uh, that is like no money, right? You tr try buying something for thirteen grand in California, right? Thirteen grand out of your pocket. We'll get you a loan for the rest in a different market, right? So it's obviously not uh, the California area. So of course my team will handle everything for you on the ground. We're gonna go over the property, go over the neighborhood, go over anticipated income and expenses, the whole thing. You know my team's got you covered, bro. Let's check it out right now. Man, I hate those other real estate gurus out there. Those real estate gurus that lead you guys to believe fairy tales, lead you guys to believe in magic, lead you guys to think that there's gonna be genies granting your wishes if you buy their course or their program. Like there's gonna be hot girls in bikinis just popping out. That's not the real life of a real estate investor. And here on Holton Wise TV, we give it to you straight. Welcome back. Now we gotta get into the numbers, right? Investing, you see a lot of people, a lot of people out there on the internet making promotional videos, doing this or that, teaching you guys, claiming to teach you guys how to invest in real estate. But you know what? They never actually do real deals with you like live, right? That's what we do, right? Real deals. They give you a lot of rah, rah. If you think, if you open your mind to, to, to thinking big, you'll do big deals. Like, dude, bro. <laughs> What the fuck does that mean, bro? Like, dude, you want some shit like that? Go fucking pay Tony Robbins. Go do a seminar. Jeez. What I'm doing, people, is real deals. Real deals with you. Analyzing real numbers. Making things happen for real. And then my team will manage the real properties for you. So you can live in Portland. You could live in LA. You could live in New York. You could live in New Jersey. All these places. Denver, right? All these places. What do they have in common, right? Incredibly high housing makes it very difficult to get started in real estate. Governments that are coming in and increasing the regulation on landlords on a daily basis, right? I'm here to help you guys get away from all that and manage the asset for you so it's totally passive, right? But I ain't just going to shoot you a song and a dance, right? I got the real deal here, the real property, the one we're looking at today. 925 West 17th, Lorraine, Ohio. 60 grand. 60 grand. We're going to do this thing for like 13 grand, okay? 13 grand out of your pocket. I'm going to get you a loan for the rest, right? That's why I love real estate, okay? Try doing any other business and getting somebody to give you 75% of the money over 30 years on a fixed interest loan, tax-deductible loan, right? Can you buy Bitcoin with a 30-year loan? No. 
Can you buy NFTs with a 30-year loan? No. Do you even really know what an NFT is? Because I sure as shit fucking don't. But you know what? I don't buy shit I don't fucking understand. So that's why I'd never buy one of those things, right? Can you start a restaurant with a 30-year loan? No. And I understand restaurants, okay? I get, look at this thing. See this thing? I know what I'm talking about when it comes to food, but I still couldn't get a 30-year loan, right? You can get 30-year loans on real estate. That's why you guys should be investing in real estate, right? We're dealing with uh, historically low interest rates right now, dude. People are giving away the money, right? All you need to do is bring 13 grand to the table. So if you're not taking all that free money right now, why it's cheap, you're losing yourself, right? You're going to be stuck trying to do a business, I don't know, with your girlfriend on Etsy selling freaking dream catchers one day because you missed the wave of free money you could be getting. Well, it's not really free, but it's, it's basically free. It's so freaking cheap right now, right? So you do that to take down deals like this, right? So if you're in those expensive markets where you can't get started because you still got to bring 25% to the table, you go places like this, man, places like Lorain, Ohio, about 30 minutes outside the city of Cleveland. And we're going to steal this deal, dude. We're going to steal it, right? We have a house with one picture. No interior pictures. And this is part of the reason why we're going to steal this deal. It should really be worth more. Uh, you, you should not be able to pick it up for this cheap. And I'm going to try to get it even cheaper. I'm going to try to get it for you for 55 55 is our target price, right? And we're going to take advantage of some situation here. There's two. Two kinds of people that would buy this house, that can buy this house, okay? Person number one, none of you. Because it's somebody who wants to buy it and live there, right? That's half the buyer pool, people that want to live in it. Well, guess what? There's a tenant in there. So, boop, half the buyer pool's cut out. You know what happens when half the buyer pool gets cut out? The price goes down, right? Supply and demand. We all understand that, yeah? Second type of buyer would be you guys, right? Real estate investors, okay? But here's the thing. The current seller is like a mom and pop seller. I don't really understand the real estate business. They're renting this thing for six hundred a month plus water sewer, so it's like a net of six seventy five. Uh, that's another reason you could tell they're mom and pop because they're having the tenant pay the water sewer. Uh, for people outside of the the greater Cleveland market, it, it sounds crazy, but that's really not uh, a feasible way to do it. You have to, as the landowner, pay it. Uh, and then just include it in your rent. Uh, it's based on how Ohio's landlord-tenant laws are uh, written and how the the water departments operate. I have a full explanation of this on the fact on HoltonWise.com. So if you're confused as to why uh, you cannot separately bill the tenants for water sewer out here, check my fact. It will go over it. I know it's a little sketchy, a little confusing. Unfortunately, uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles. So, like, the seller is getting a net rent here of about 675, okay? About 675. That's great. Because already half of our buyer pool, they're they're done. They're not interested cuz they can't move in cuz there's a tenant living there. And then that leads you guys, investors. Well, guess what? A lot of you are like, dude, 60k for a 675 rental. It's not a good deal. He said he can get it at 55, okay? But it's only a 675 a month rental. Still not a good deal. Beautiful. I love that. I'm so happy a lot of people feel that way because that's where I come in. That's where a market expert comes in. This property, market rent people, this is an $1,100 rental, right? Well, $10.95. You got to make it look good. You know what I'm saying? It's like $0.99 cent looks better than a dollar. dollar ninety nine instead of $2. You get what I'm saying, right? But market rent for a big old house like this to cash bank tenants or Section 8 tenants, we're looking at $10.95, right? That'd be 13140 for the year. Under fixed and variable expense estimates, having my company do 100% of the work for you, you do nothing, totally passive, we'd be looking at clearing approximately 7418 If, because we have such a small buyer pool right now, because half the buyers can't live in it, so they don't want it, the other half of the buyers don't understand how much money is being left on the bone, so if we are able to pick it up for fifty five. You put down thirteen thousand seven hundred fifty. That's it. All you need, folks. Thirteen grand, and you are a freaking landlord, man. Forty-one k comes from the bank. If you don't have lenders, I got them. Shoot my team an email: sales at holtonwise.com. I'll get them to you. If you're able to do the deal like that and get that rent up to market without a turnover, we're looking at a freaking thirty-nine percent return on your investment. Now, it's very important though that you understand the reality of the situation. That's like best case scenario. 
that we able to get the tenant from a net of 675 to like 1095 without a turnover. If they do move out, you'll have to do a turnover. Now, we don't have pictures of the interior. Uh, I'm going to guess nothing is new. Per the notes, it's like a long-term, month-to-month tenant. So I'm sure you're doing like a full turn, right? So I would imagine you're spending like a, like 10K, right? Uh, just assuming you're doing it all, right? We're going to do the inspection, right? Put our offer contingent on inspection. But like I've been in the game a long time. You do not get a house, a whole house, and have some dude or gal rent it for six seventy five a month for like many, many years, and then have them move out, and then you just walk in and go, Yeah, fuck's God, sweep, 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 slap a for rent sign in the front yard, and then you get new tenants at market rate. That's not a reality of the rental property business. What's a more likely scenario is if this tenant moved out, you're doing a unit turn, which, of course, will skew your numbers. But we don't know for a fact that the tenant would move out before you got their rent up. What I always advise people to do is increase the rent slowly. I can almost guarantee you if on day one of ownership we give them a 30-day notice, because legally we can do it with the 30-day notice, hey, brah, your rent's uh, 675 uh, but next month it's going to be 1100 uh, Pay it or get the fuck out, right? You could, you could give them that ultimatum. It's your right. But uh, usually they'll get the fuck out. And then we got to spend like 10, 15K turning the thing over. I don't think that's the smartest thing to do. My opinion, why the money's coming in, baby, keep collecting it. What I like to do is increase them slowly, right? They're at 675 Rent, uh, market rent is 1095 right? Do something small. Like, all right, man, new lease, you got to pay eight. And then the next year, go even bigger. Now you got to pay 950 You know what I'm saying? Slowly work them up. Try to keep their butt in your unit, right? Because collecting a little bit of less rent every month isn't really going to sway your return. What does sway your return is not collecting rent for a couple months while we do a $10,000, $15,000 uh, renovation, right? There's going to be enough turnovers in your life if you become a landlord, folks. You're going to deal with turnover all the time. What you do not want to do is create artificial turnover. You know who creates artificial turnover? Crappy landlords, right? They don't know what they're doing, right? You got to collect money. That's the name of the game, folks. Take money and put it in your pocket, right? Never be in a hurry to be like, no, stop giving me money. I want to take 15 k out of my pocket and send it this way, right? Don't do that, right? Just keep collecting as much money as you can, right? You're going to be working, moving your portfolio along, getting other rentals, adding it to your portfolio. There's always going to be turnovers happening, right? Keep that number to as few of them as possible. And by doing my strategy of slowly increasing the rents, it is, in my opinion, the best, smartest way to gain the most net profit overall in totality that's my thought but of course it would be your property so it would be up to you we can do either but you know who am i i don't know i'm just a dude who runs the biggest portfolio in my market and i've sold 200 million dollars worth of stuff you should probably listen to me but if you don't want to listen to me that's cool too because i also make like a ton of money when landlords do really stupid stuff and then they get in over their head and then they need me to come in and rescue them and or liquidate their property either way uh works good for me but if you're trying to also make a ton of money I would suggest you go slowly and avoid those artificial turnovers. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.